Hey everybody, Ryan here. Today, we're gonna to be talking about some of the new time-lapse features in Arsenal. Let's go. Okay, before we jump into the time-lapse stuff, I wanted to talk about one other thing that's in the next release real quick. We've added support for seven new cameras. We had two new Canon mirrorless, the EOS R and the EOS RP, and then we had two new Nikon mirrorless, the Z7 and the Z6. And since these are entirely new systems, it took us a little longer to sort of work through all the code changes on our end that we needed to get those supported. But I'm happy to say that now that those are in, expect future cameras in those lines to come on board a lot quicker than they did on this time. So let's dive in and I'll walk you through the new user interface. I've always really admired the simplicity of the iPhone camera apps time-lapse section. It's just a start and a stop button. And to me, that's about as simple as you can make a time-lapse. So we wanted to do something similar with Arsenal. So what we did is we created this smart lapse section. And if you're new to time-lapse, this is where you go. All you do is you push start, it's gonna calculate a starting exposure and then Arsenal is going to manage the interval for you. And it's actually going to change that interval as your time lapse gets longer. It's going to redo some of the previous frames. And the effect is it's always shooting for a duration of the final output video, not a specific interval. So if I were to let this go, my interval in the final, final time lapse might be you know, one, once every 30 seconds. And if I did a really short one, it might be once every five seconds. And the nice thing here is, you know, your input is kind of when do you start and when do you stop? And then Arsenal produces this nice video that kind of has an interesting amount of movement in it. As with previous releases, at any point I can hit play to watch what I've shot back so far. One of the new features that we've added, uh, if I go ahead and stop here, is now you can actually see your time lapses in the gallery. So you'll see this little clock movie icon here. And if I go into them, I can, I can watch it back again. But what I can also do is I can hit the share button and go ahead and share directly from the app. So that's a nice new addition. You can share kind of on any of the normal OS share options. Smart Lapse is really designed to be the kind of this quick onboarding experience where if you're new to time lapse, it's managed for you. But we know that people want to have a lot more customization. So we made this custom section. When you click on it, you get a couple of options. So I'm going to go ahead and, and for now we're going to do fixed. And what this means is we're actually setting the interval. So here if I move the interval around, you can see that it's updating our runtime. So this is how long, assuming we're doing, let's see, in this case, let's say, assuming we're doing 215 shots at one every 17 seconds, uh, it's going to take this long to run. And you can see both of these kind of update as we change the settings. One of the nice things is we can actually change these settings while the time lapse is running. And once we've chosen our interval and our number of shots, we can go down and choose our, how our settings are managed. And this is where things get kind of interesting. We've added an auto here, and the auto option lets Arsenal manage settings. This uses our home-built auto exposure algorithm to smoothly ramp settings as the light changes. Basically, this says, let Arsenal choose what it thinks are the best ranges for these settings and how they should, how they should transition. If you've done a lot of time lapses, you might have uh, different ways that you want to do things. We created the Holy Grail option, which lets you say how you want those settings to change. So here, let's ignore this EV for a second. We've got shutter, aperture, and ISO. What's going to happen is as things get darker, so if I hit start here, you'll notice it's going to go ahead and choose some starting settings for us. And what will happen here is as things get darker, the shutter speed is going to increase and get longer. So here I'll just turn the camera around, point it, point it towards something a little darker. As it gets darker, it's going to slowly increase the shutter speed up until the edge of our range here. So these range sliders, let us say in this example, I want my shutter to be somewhere between 1 2000, I'll go ahead and bring it down here. 1, 160, and 6 seconds. Arsenal's going to try and keep everything correctly exposed within these ranges, 
But then once it gets to the edge of the shutter speed, it's going to start decreasing the aperture because that means it'll get more light. So say we're, we're on something really dark, say we hit, I'm just going to move this down and say, say we, say we want our max shutter speed to be one second. The next time around, it's going to recalculate things and it's going to say, okay, I can't go past one second. So I actually have to bring down my aperture. If things kept getting darker and darker and darker, you're going to see your aperture creep all the way up to our minimum aperture here. And then finally, once that's done, it's going to start bumping up our ISO. So it always goes, it always tries to move within the ranges of top down. So it's going to try to try to move within the range of the shutter. And then once that's at the extreme, it's going to hit, it's going to change the aperture. And then once that's at the extreme, it's going to change the ISO. So one thing that's a little counterintuitive with Arsenal Holy Grail ranges is that Arsenal is going to try to use the darkest setting possible. So it's going to try to do the shortest possible shutter. It's going to try to do the lowest possible ISO, and it's going to try to do the highest aperture number. However, as it needs more light, it's going to increase those settings. So it's going to go for a longer shutter. It's going to increase the ISO and it's going to decrease the aperture number. Let's say for example, that I'm doing some water movement and I know that I can get about a one second exposure. Ideally, I, for things like waves moving in and out, I want to try and keep it at that one second exposure for as long as possible. And as things get really dark, only then should I bump it up. So if that's what I want to do, I can go to my prioritize setting and I can actually drag ISO above my shutter here. I'm going to go ahead and move my shutter so that it's between one second and 30 seconds in this example. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set whatever I want my max ISO to be. So let's just say 1600. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to bump the ISO before it bumps the shutter. So it's going to do its best to keep that one second shutter. And then only when it gets too dark, when it gets to the extreme of the ISO, will it start bumping the shutter. And so by using this prioritize, I can change the order in which things are increased uh, with Arsenal. Lastly, we have this basic option, which if you just want to manually control your settings as your time lapse is going, you can be in the app and just be changing it. Um, that honestly, I think is a little more work, but if that's what you want to do, you can do that. And then the one other thing that we added in this release is slider support. So we've had lots of people asking for this. If you have a slider or a pan rig or something like that, you can plug the slider into the trigger port, assuming that's how your slider operates. And uh, assuming your camera has a external trigger port that's not USB. So sorry, Sony users. If you go here and you select the slider option, your slider is going to trigger your camera through the trigger port. And as long as, as, long as this is running, Arsenal is going to see that a shot was taken, pull in the photo, add it to the preview video, and then calculate the settings for the next shot. So here you can let Arsenal manage the settings, but your slider is actually managing the interval. And the reason why you want to do this is the slider knows when it's moving. So typically you can set these up so that they'll move and then they'll shoot. And then the nice thing here is, you know, if you were trying to try to sync it with Arsenal's interval, um, that's gonna be really hard to get right. The slider integration is great because it just lets Arsenal manage settings and lets your slider manage the interval. And then when you're done, you can hit stop. We have it here where you put in how many shots you anticipate to take. And the reason for that is so that Arsenal can uh, do a few calculations to help with things like smoothing, but it also lets it know how much time is left and things like that. We recommend you just sync this up with whatever you're setting your slider to do. So overall, I'm really excited about the new time-lapse features in Arsenal. There's kind of some UI improvements. There's some experience improvements. The Holy Grail is honestly, I think, a huge step forward for people doing any sort of day-to-night time-lapse. There's one more piece to getting these smooth day-to-night Holy Grail time-lapses, and that's post-smoothing. We're actually working on our own post-smoothing algorithm. The problem you have with a lot of cameras is they only adjust in third stop increments. Even if you get kind of the correct third stop increments, say things are getting darker, you'll see it start to get dark and then Arsenal will adjust it back up by a third stop. It'll start to get dark and it'll adjust it back up by a third stop. And so you see these little tiny flickers in your final video. The way you actually get rid of that is through a post-smoothing process. 
There's some good tools already out there. LR time lapse is great. I know there's a couple others, but we really want to try and get all this into the app itself. So we've been working on our own post smoothing algorithm. That should be in this release, and if not, it'll definitely be in the following release. So look forward to that. There's a lot of things that have gone into building that as well. And what that'll do is it'll take the remaining third stop flicker out of the video. I want to say thanks to the Arsenal team for all the hard work they've been putting in building these new time lapse features and some of the other things that we've got coming in this release. Not only has there been a lot of work on the software development side, there's a lot of field testing that goes into this. It's one of those things where we can't literally just can't test this feature in the office. We have to be out in the field to make sure it's working. So I um, especially want to thank Lucian for all the cold nights he spent out camped on the side of a cliff making sure this works. I want to say thanks to Ben and Andrew who have put a ton of time on the development side into this. And thanks to the rest of the team that, that uh, makes all this possible. Thanks also to all of our beta testers. They're really this this wouldn't be as good as, as I think it is uh, without you guys. So that feedback is, is really valuable. Keep it coming. We've got this going into beta this week, and then hopefully the week after we'll have it out the door. We're going to be trying to do a lot more videos, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more updates. Thanks.